to our first episode of Walk the Globe, a quarterly look at the most critical areas you need to be aware of around the world. Today, I'm joined by Bob Howell, Senior Advisor, Critical Operations and Global Operations. Bob's going to touch on the activity in Ukraine, security in Iran, concerns in Saudi Arabia, immigration sentiment in Colombia, and natural disaster threats in the Pacific Rim. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Bob. Uh, in my capacity, my job is to help advise clients on what the risks are and risk mitigation strategies to mitigate exposure to their personnel and exposure to the company. So with respect to Ukraine, I want to touch on some key points there. Russian GRU, which is Russian uh, military intelligence, counterintelligence more specifically, they're actively engaged in Ukraine in subversive and suspected sabotage activities to disrupt the government and impact the 2018 presidential elections. We've seen recent, uh, actually we've seen three incidents now of ammunition depots being attacked. Originally, we thought that there might have been some uh, accident that happened, but the fact that we had three of them happen now at various parts across the country has strong indications that the GRU may be, indica may be engaged in sabotage activities. It's one thing to keep in, in consideration. With that in mind, we're going to want to limit our exposure and any time spent on military facilities, and then we would see a natural progression too to be where government buildings and facilities may be of concern as well. So we definitely would recommend uh, limiting your exposure to those environments. Uh, in the past, foreign intelligence services have really been focused on you know, classified information. Today, that's just not true. Foreign intelligence services are actively conducting espionage activities on corporations to gain whatever competitive advantage they might be able to gain in the marketplace. So we're seeing signs of espionage activity in uh, Ukraine, particularly when it comes to competing businesses with those type of activities that Russia uh, conducts in country. Organizations should be uh, considering and looking at whatever risk mitigation measures they can put in place to mitigate the exposure for corporate espionage activities and subversive activities uh, that they may be involved with where they, they may want to try to put a bad face on U.S. entities or U.S. companies that are, are companies that are friendly to U.S. companies. Let's move on to Iran. Uh, it's a little bit different situation in Iran. Uh, with the new U.S. sanctions, uh, we may very likely see an increase in targeting of U.S. affiliated or friendly businesses by the Iranian government. This has happened in the past, uh, typically when they're not happy with the political relationship with uh, another country, then we see them start to target uh, those kinds of organizations or those organizations that are friendly to their adversaries. Uh, so we're going to want to keep a close eye on that and, and try to get early indications that's going on and take, a, take into account your business continuity plans as to how you respond if you begin to see those kind of activities uh, occurring in Iran. Uh, here again, uh, the Iran Intelligence Ministry is a sophisticated global intelligence service, and they do conduct espionage activities not only on foreign personnel and companies, but reportedly to its own citizens. So here again, take the appropriate measures to protect personnel uh, proprietary information, and consider conducting liaison with friendly embassies and councils as well. They can be helpful if needed in a situation. Moving on to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. One of the major concerns right now of our client base are the Houthi missile launches into Saudi Arabia. Now, keep in mind that the uh, Iron Curtain that has been established by the Saudi government has been very successful in shooting down these missiles. While no missiles have successfully reach any heavily populated areas, such as the capital of Riyadh. Uh, there has been a few cases of collateral damage, collateral injuries, and even one death from falling debris from a shoot down of a Houthi missile. So while these this condition is what we would consider a lethal nuisance, it's not really a direct threat. An important point to note here is that the missile platforms that the Houthi rifles are using are not sophisticated targeting systems. They don't use GPS. This basically is an azimuth that they take, and then it's a point and shoot type scenario. And so it's point and shoot and see where they land. So their ability to specifically target certain buildings or certain locations is not a capability that they've demonstrated that they have at the current time. Uh, so that's 
diminishes the threat, doesn't turn it into a direct deadly threat. It's more of a lethal nuisance. Keep in mind that it's important in this scenario then to know where the hotel locations of your personnel are, to know where the job sites are that your people are working. So if something does happen to one of those locations, you know who may be potentially impacted and you can begin to reach out and validate their safety and well-being. Moving on to Latin America, I wanted to touch quickly on a couple of things. Colombia is having a little bit of a problem right now because we're seeing a lot of refugees from Venezuela coming into Colombia. So uh, the local populace is starting to see an impact into local business, which isn't looked at favorably by Venezuelans, as well as uh, local communities. So um, we're concerned we're going to start to see anti-Venezuelan sentiment and potentially protests and acti uh, activities, and maybe even some uh, lower level violence. And so we're, we're watching this situation closely to see how it continues to develop. The government, the, the new president is trying to do what he can to, to put a lid on this, to, to try to mitigate this issue. But um, uh, we're hearing a lot of rumblings in the local populace are just not happy with what's going on uh, and how the Venezuelans are impacting their economy and their communities. Uh, Pacific Rim region here, I'm, um, I'm, I'm talking about the Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Papua New Guinea, Japan. You know, this part of the world is, as we saw with the recent earthquakes and even the volcano eruption in Indonesia, uh, this part of the world is, is susceptible to earthquakes, volcanoes, and super typhoons. So we just had a super typhoon that went through the Mariana Islands, significant damage. Uh, fortunately, uh, they seem to be fairly well prepared. We haven't seen a huge death toll. It is something that, that we have to keep in mind and be prepared for. It's important that your local incident management plans and your emergency action plans are current, are up to date, and that you are testing these systems uh, and these programs at least annually, if not, if not more often. Ideally, we'd like to see plans like this being tested with tabletop exercises once every six months, but at least on an annual basis. Uh, so it's very important that you, you stay on top of that. Tracking your travelers, knowing where they're at, so that when an incident happens, you know who potentially is impacted uh, and then begin to reach out again and validate their safety and well-being. This becomes a little bit more complicated because we see a significant vacation travel to this area. And some companies, uh, you know, you may not know for sure that they're there. So having whatever systems in place you have to be able to identify who may be potentially impacted by event is, is critical. So make sure those emergency action plans uh, and those local incident management plans are up to date, uh, they're validated, and they're tested at least on an annual basis.